Hi everyone, today I wanted to do a solo episode and tell you about an experience that I had um, last week where I was invited to go and talk in front of a grade 8 class, which was super exciting and um, a little bit nerve-wracking because I know that sometimes those grade 8s can really be tough, but you know, I was excited to do it and um, you know, it is something that I've thought about wanting to do more and potentially you know, speaking engagements in the future. And so I thought this would be a really cool opportunity for um, me to test that out a little bit, you know, to push myself a little bit and, um, you know, also just to, you know, go and talk to, you know, some kids that, um, you know, hopefully in one way or another, I could help. Um, and I got to do a presentation on podcasting. And I talked a lot about, you know, my experiences and it led to a lot of reflection. Um, I told my friend who invited me, uh, my one goal was to get at least a, a smirk or a laugh out of them and nothing, a tough crowd for sure. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I understood it and she warned me before that they were a little bit, they are a little bit quiet. And, you know, I, I thought that I, I was funny enough to get at least one little laugh, but apparently not. You know, the, the cool thing about the experience though was, I started reflecting not only on all the podcasting that I've been doing and the different guests and the different episodes, going back and looking over them, you know, picking out some of my favorite episodes, some of the toughest episodes and things that I thought they might resonate with. And with that, I got to reflect a lot on myself in junior high and, you know, that period in my life, you know, call it grade seven to grade nine. And, you know, what I learned and how it shaped me, how it affected me, you know, what were some of the things that I was struggling at that time. But what I realized was, you know, it was probably one of the toughest times of my life. And this is right when, I mean, of course, you know, it's a tough time for everybody that age, you know, you're starting to hit puberty, you're starting to figure out, you know, what what kind of person you're going to be, you're kind of turning into your own almost person now, instead of just the child. And, you know, trying to think about what was going on in my life on there in that time. And one of the things and I shared this with them was that, you know, I was bullied a lot during this time. It was probably the worst um, in my life um, for being bullied and going through those experiences and, you know, thinking that it, never affected me that it was just whatever it happened and realizing that that wasn't necessarily true um and more so because i had not actually dealt with it i had just pushed it down as i tend to do with a lot of different things um and you know i think it, it's funny because when i was thinking back on it a lot of the decisions call it that i made about my life i made back then you know, decisions about myself, how I thought about myself, what I thought about the world. And, you know, as I've started doing, you know, a lot of this work and uncovering and questioning things, I realized that I took a lot of these as truths, you know, truths that I had decided at this young of an age. And I had forgotten that they were actually choices. They were choices and things that I had decided and not necessarily truths, not necessarily what I was actually, you know, looking back on it now, if I was in that same position, you know, as an adult, I would make very different decisions. However, because it's, you know, stayed in the self-conscious or subconscious, sorry, I didn't, you know, I thought that they, because they had stayed in the subconscious, I didn't realize that they were opinions that I had formed at a young age. And so digging into those has been a big part of my work. A really interesting one though, and I, I decided, to, I, I was always trying to be a part of the cool group. I wanted to be close with them. I wanted to be, you know, part of them, one of the popular kids, whatever it might be. And I would do anything to be a part of that. And, you know, a lot of times I was kind of kept around and just to be bullied really was, you know, I, I never took a hint. I never realized that, you know, they weren't really interested in being my friend or um, whatever it might have been. And it was interesting, the turning point in, 
as I was reflecting, I remembered this was I looked at another kid and, you know, I thought to myself, I don't understand, you know, why, why they, why they keep, you know, hanging around. Like they just, you know, they're, they're just, <laughs> everybody's mean to them. Everyone makes fun of them. Like, why do they keep hanging around? And I had this aha moment realizing that that was me too. You know, I was doing the exact same thing. And that's kind of when it dawned on me and I made a switch. And, um, you know, back in those days, it's a lot easier when you have those stops for your grades and going into a new grade, I went, well, I'll just, you know, I have a new home room. I'm not with the same kids anymore. And so I'll just make new friends. And, you know, that it was, it was a very good decision. However, a lot of those, you know, call them wounds and scars because I just ignored them, you know, really affected me up until today. And the other thing that I was reflecting on was I realized that at home, this was also the time where there was a lot of conflict happening at my house and some of my coping mechanisms that I've really started to pay attention to this last little while. And one of the biggest ones for me is almost this sense of escapism, almost this um, numbing out that I tend to do. And not realizing that it was actually a defense mechanism to escape from the world, to escape from my problems. And I would do it in different ways. I would do it, you know, with video games or movies or TV shows or whatever it might be. But going off into, you know, a world where I can completely be somebody else. I can immerse myself completely in a different story. I don't have to worry about, you know, what's going on at home, what's going on at school, you know, how I feel about myself, the things that I'm struggling with, you know, um, you know, my, the things that I'm self-conscious about, because I can completely immerse myself in this new world. And, you know, as I got older, sometimes it, it also happened for numbing out, you know, for drinking and realizing now that that's a lot of times why I would do it. It's just, I wanted to escape from these feelings, from these things that I'm struggling with. And so, you know, um, when you drink, you don't have to feel those things. You can just feel good. And really trying to deconstruct these and realizing, I think one of the biggest breakthroughs too for me was instead of getting mad at these coping mechanisms, um, almost thanking them for being there and realizing they did serve a purpose and a huge purpose. You know, they're really what kept me going during those tough times. They are what allowed me to get through. And now, realizing because I'm not in the same situation, because I have different tools in my tool belt, um, I have more experience, I've been working on these things, you know, I don't necessarily need these defense mechanisms all the time. And so actually taking a step back and saying, you know, thank you for your purpose, thank you for helping me. Um, and however, I don't need you right now. And trying to work through that and reflecting through that and forcing myself to do things that go against that. And, you know, for me, a huge one, especially during these lockdowns has been, I always need noise. I always need something going on to be doing something and realizing actually that work was another one of those, you know, coping mechanisms is that if I can fully immerse myself in work, if I can go and I'll work 60, 80, 100 hours a week, no problem because I can focus on the problems at work. I don't have to focus on the problems in me. I don't have to focus on the problems at home. I can only worry about work. And then when I get home, I'm so exhausted that I don't have the energy to work, worry about those other things. Um, and so using that as another form of es escapism. And, you know, this past year has really forced me almost to just stop, to stop and really, you know, take a look around, take a, you know, really think about things, really, you know, actually see what's going on internally. And to force myself to explore that a little bit more, you know, I try to go for a walk, you know, usually by myself almost every day with no music, no nothing, no ear pods, um, you know, just to kind of be in my own mind a little bit to see what's, you know, what's coming up, what I'm thinking about, where I'm naturally going. 
um, I've forced myself to journal a little bit and the same thing of, okay, let's see what's actually going on in my head. Let's see what's bothering me. Let's see if I can get it out and start digging at certain things. You know, why do these thoughts keep coming up? Why do these thoughts keep coming up? Is it specifically what I'm thinking about or is there something else that's causing that? And so really, really just actually looking inward at myself and my body fights against it every single day. A lot of times I have to force myself to go for a walk. I have to force myself to go um, and journal. And even things as simple as, you know, not listening to music whenever I'm doing a task, right? Whether it's cooking or whatever it might be. And just really trying to feel and figure out what's going on in me. And so I think, you know, some of the biggest things that I've, I've come to realize after this reflection period is one, you know, you can't ignore the past and, you know, you can take good and bad from almost every experience that you have. But if you ignore the past, that's when those problems really start coming up. And a lot of times you don't even realize that's where they're coming from. Um, you know, specifically for me, this was huge where I would just push everything down, every emotion, every um, experience, it was just pushed down. This doesn't affect me. This doesn't affect me. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And the other one is this idea of unlearning to relearn. And those come from some of those decisions that I made as a child about my life, about who I am, about what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, about what I like, what I don't like. And sometimes having to completely unlearn those and rediscover them for myself now as an adult. Um, mm -hmm to figure out, you know, is this true? Is this what I actually think or has it changed? Was this based on reality or was this based on something that I came up with? Yeah, so that's what I've been thinking about. Um, let me know what you think about these solo episodes. Uh, and yeah, can't wait to hear from you guys soon.